hey, hey. How is it going, everyone? Who have we got here? Hey, Ingrid. Hey, Linda. Hey, Kim. What's up? What's up? Welcome to Wake the Fuck Up Wednesday, everyone. Yes, I got myself some sun last weekend. I like spent so much time at this beach, mostly in the shade. <laughs> this is what happens. It's awesome. I love it. Hey, Christine. Hey, Catherine. What's up, everyone? So good to see you all here. Hey, summer girl. Who is that? I'm going to hit to wave at you. All right. Awesome. So here we are. It's another Wednesday. It's another wake the fuck up Wednesday. And I'm going to talk about one of my fuck ups. <laughs> anyway, if you all remember last week, um, I had to cancel wake the fuck up Wednesday because my flight to Hawaii was turned around midair, which hasn't happened before, but it was cool. I was cool with it. I was like, okay, I'd rather that we be safe than like try to cross the Pacific without a communication system, which is apparently what would have happened if we didn't turn around. So we got turned around, right? And um, oh my gosh, that was fine. But then we got in line to get on the plane that they had waiting for us. And then they called me and my daughter and my dog over and we're like, you can't get on this plane. So today's episode, I wanna talk about um, how I lost my shit, basically, and the importance of the power of the pause, which we replayed for you last week because it was relevant today, and also how we know when we're out of alignment, the importance of um, being in alignment when we're handling with things, getting ourselves into alignment, like noticing when we're out, how to get ourselves back in, and really also we're not perfect and shit's going to happen. Life does not always allow us the time and space to get back into alignment before having to solve problems. That's what I wanted to talk about today, okay? And I hope it's a benefit to you so that you don't like feel horrible like I did after what happened. So one of the main things that I've been grokking in my own work and my own trauma work is to not process when out of alignment, okay? I am one of those people that's like, if there's a problem, I feel so uncomfortable with it. Like if someone misunderstands me or I'm not doing well with my partner, I just want to fix it because I just want the shitty feeling to go away. And I'm usually like, let's deal with this right now. And they're like, I don't want to talk right now. Like, like this is super intense. Kind of don't want to deal with it right now. And I'm just like, no, I want to fix this right now. But what's happening there is I'm out of alignment they're out of alignment because I'm like in their face, right? And this is just like not a good space. Because when we're out of alignment, when we're feeling threatened, for example, we see things with like a tunnel vision. We see things with like a narrower perspective and we're not coming from a more compassionate, wise and bigger picture view, which is where it's nice to be in when we're resolving conflicts, trying to come up with creative solutions and make decisions that are the best for us and other people, right? So, um, and we've all heard that before, right? Oh, you should take a break and you should go into the other room and you should like do all that stuff. Count to three, count to 10, take some deep breaths. But listen, the other thing that I've been really grokking is, yeah, it's not just if you're having conflict in a conversation, but it's like, we also shouldn't make decisions, give advice ourselves when we're out of alignment or receive advice when others are out of alignment. So if someone's giving us advice like an internet troll, they're usually out of alignment when they're writing, like to not receive advice, like that, that's not valid advice. They're not coming from an aligned place, right? So um, let me kind of tell you the story and all the embarrassing shit I did. So basically, um, my husband had left to go paragliding in France. And then I was solo parenting for a while, working a bunch, packing for six weeks away, getting ready to lead two retreats in Hawaii. 
with my kid and my dog. I tried to mitigate all that with like booking a direct flight so that we arrived at a decent time. I didn't have to deal with airport transfers, all that kind of stuff. So we're on the direct flight, we get turned around. I'm like, all right, it's all still good. We get in line for the other flight. They say, oh, uh, Ms. Verz Ms. Verzoni, Anna and Maya Verzoni, please come to see the gate agent. And I'm like, what the fuck? I get there and she's like, you can't get on this plane because now the plane is landing after 1130 and you're not allowed to land in Hawaii without a dog after 1130. And y'all know I'm a little rebel. And y'all know that I love following rules when they make sense, but when they don't make any fucking sense, I don't follow them. But that doesn't really work when someone can keep you from getting on a plane. So anyway, I'm like, actually, that's not true. Like we land after 11.30 a lot. I can show you my receipts from the veterinarian that meets us at the airport after 11.30, which by the way, is the only thing that has to happen when we land in Hawaii. We land in Hawaii, I already have the permits and everything. We land, we meet with a vet, and then we go on our merry way. I had a text from the vet when I told her that our flight was gonna turn around and be late. She goes, great, I'll meet you there at midnight because we were gonna land at 11.50. So the vet who is trained in the regulations of Hawaii and animals is like, I'll meet you there at midnight. So they're telling me this shit and I'm like, that's impossible. Like I fly here every four to six weeks. Like you can see my flight itinerary. I fly with my dog. We land after 11.30 a lot. <laughs> and she's just like, wouldn't hear it. And I'm like, this is bullshit. So anyway, I was trying to, you, you, it was funny like y'all, like when you watch your brains after you've been meditating a while, like there's a part of you that can observe that, that you're like not doing great. <laughs> and it's like, you're losing your shit. So I'm like, hey, okay, look, I'm super upset right now. I'm not upset at you, I'm upset at the situation, but fuck, this sucks. Because now you're telling me I have to travel by myself with a child, with a dog, all the way back, we're gonna get two hours of sleep and there's gonna be another like 20 whatever hours of travel. So anyway, I'm like the bitch that's like raising her voice at the agent. That I would have normally, and if it was someone else, I'd be like, oh wow, that sucks, like that person's just doing their job, but airline travel's stressful, yada yada. So <laughs> I'm like that person, right? And um, when my kid had heard that we weren't going, she was crying. So I'm just like not in a good place, right? And so I am trying my best to show her the evidence. I'm like qualifying, like, I'm sorry I'm so upset but now, but fuck, this sucks. And I'm not mad at you, but fuck, can you please do something, <laughs> right? And then finally I'm like, okay, I need to just let go. We're just gonna do this, now I'm gonna reframe. I can't change the situation right now. And then she's like, will you take 4,000 miles? And I'm like, hell no. This is like way bigger than 4,000 miles. So anyway, I was out of alignment, right? So here's the thing with some situations. They don't allow us the opportunity to get back in alignment before having to interact. So in this situation, they're like, oh, here you are off on your vacation. We just turned your plan. Come over here. I'm going to lay some crazy shit on you. And then you're going to have to give me a response right now <laughs> because we got to get everybody on this plane. It's not like I could be like, oh, I just need a few minutes to calm down. Right. She's like, what do you want to do? I need to know. And then so when we are out of alignment, we are not going to be our best selves. So that's one observation to make, but it's also a point of self-compassion that I really want you to be aware of, okay? Like to really be aware that our self-compassion, we want to be able to reflect, like I'm not at my best. So I was also sleep deprived after three days of less than the sleep that I needed um, because I was getting ready and stuff. So there was all of these things, right? It was late and while we can't absolve ourselves of responsibility for how we show up when we're out of alignment. It can be a place where we can offer ourselves compassion and also others compassion, right? When they're responding out of alignment. There's a concept called the fundamental attribution error in psychology. And it's where we have a tendency as humans to attribute someone's behavior to who they are, what kind of person they are, instead of the context, their situation. 
And I just really want to remind you that even in the field of psychology, this is seen as an error. Yet for ourselves, we do. I'm such a bitch. Oh, I'm so like, why the fuck did I do it? Because I felt a lot of shame after for being upset, right? So with this fundamental attribution error, it applies not just to how we see others, like someone cuts us off and we're like, fucking hell, what an asshole. Instead of like, wow, I wonder what's going on in that person's life that they had to do that, right? Um, so it doesn't absolve us of responsibility, but it helps us understand and be a little bit more compassionate towards others and ourselves. Like, of course, yeah. I mean, I was kind of maxed out. It made sense that happened. And I tried. And sometimes even when I do my best, that's fucking embarrassing. That's just life because being a human's hard, right? But let's kind of talk a little bit about how do we even know if we're in alignment or not? So we can look at it at like a scale of like minus five to plus five, right? This is something that my trauma therapist, Star Rosemont, um, taught me. It's like you're at a minus five or a plus five. And you don't want to process when you're anywhere in the negatives. Even neutral's better, right? But we also want to notice when we're creeping into the negatives and not wait till we're at a minus five. So like my minus one and my minus two out of alignment looks like I'm a little more impatient. I'm a little more irritable. Maybe I'm complaining a little bit more. I also engage in behaviors like maybe I reach for an extra glass of wine or eat a little extra food like there's something in me that's compensating for something right i notice that and ideally at that moment at the minus one or minus two i can bring myself back when i'm at minus five that's like a rage right i don't want to get there because it's really hard to recover from there it's almost like at that point the wave has to pass so what are some of the signs that we are minus one or minus two and minus five, right? So for you, you can reflect like, okay, what does heading down that path look like for me? And where's, I've lost my shit. Similarly, maybe like, where do you wake up? Maybe we wake up and for a brief moment, we're at like a plus one or plus two, and then the thoughts about all the shit we have to do, our anxiety kicks in and then we drop to minus one or minus two, right? So the goal, is first to become aware of what's our baseline alignment. Like, where do we tend to hang out? And there's no judgment if you're hanging out in the negatives, right? If we're hanging out in the negatives, we can say, all right, I need to engage in more self-care. Because oftentimes we're like, well, too bad, life is hard. You still need to be fucking nice and still need to do all that shit. And it's like, and <laughs> we need to make it a little easier on ourselves by getting back in alignment. So for me, that's exercise. So the, the things that get me out of alignment, you might identify with too, are not exercising, not getting enough sleep, forgetting to eat. Um, those are my main ones, I would say. Not getting enough sleep, yeah, not exercising, forgetting to eat. Meditation too, but meditation is almost like my next level of self-care, but like that's like basic shit that I need to, to have my day go okay, right? Ways we can bring ourselves back into alignment, right? Ways we can bring ourselves back into alignment, we could do breathing exercises that are quick because it's not like we can just be like, I'm gonna go meditate all the time, but we can like go into the bathroom and be like, do a relaxation breath. A simple one is to inhale for four seconds, exhale for seven or eight. So inhale, exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, right? We can do that a few times, maybe even up for like 90 seconds or so. That would be awesome, right? That helps. We The key thing with bringing ourselves back into alignment is we want to change our physiology. So we want to like, um, breathing, we cannot, like breathing deeply and when the exhale is longer than the inhale is incongruent with anxiety. Anxiety is like the opposite, shallow breaths, right? The exhale is really short. <laughs> and we start hyperventilating. Um, kind of shocking the system. So like splashing cold water on your face, 
like in uh, dialectical behavioral therapy, we also recommend like you can put your face in ice water. So you like make a little tub of ice water, hold a deep breath, plunge your face into it. You could put an ice pack on your face. You can walk outside, just changing your physical position, walking outside for a change in temperature, feeling wind on you, feeling cold air, whatever that is, can help change your physiology, okay? And then that can help bring us back into alignment. And once we're at like a zero or a plus one or plus two from that place, then we can engage in the conversation and the problem solving and all that, okay? So start to notice also if you have a sort of um, narrative running in the background when you're in a certain place. Like for myself, if I start like at the airport, some of the negative narrative that goes on for me when I'm in the fight, flight, or freeze and that far down the negative, it's like a trauma response, right? I'm like, I'm not safe. See, I planned everything so shit didn't happen and it still happened. I'm not safe. Or see, I can't rely on people. The like, people are still going to fuck up, right? Um, I can't count on people, right? I'm alone and no one will help me. Those are some of my narratives that I have when I'm in that negative. When I start having those thoughts, I go, oh, I'm in like, I'm out of alignment right now. I'm not gonna make any decisions or try to think about shit right now. You don't wanna process, not just with another person, but process your own shit. I mean, oh my gosh, like I remember during breakups or something, right? Like just being in such pain and then thinking about the relationship and like what went wrong or whatever. And it's like, oh my gosh, that is not the place to be doing that, even though we naturally go there, yeah? So we wanna become aware of where we are on the scale without judgment. We want to offer ourselves self-compassion, which is part of bringing us back into alignment, not beating up on ourselves because we're out of alignment again. And then we can do some of those things to bring us back into alignment, right? So I posted this video on social media. <laughs> it's so awesome. I have to share it here. It's, it's on my Facebook page if you go to my personal page. But um, it's like this kitten and this serval cat. Serval cats are like a large, I think they're a wild cat that some people have domesticated. I think there's a crossbreed called a savanna cat. But it's a beautiful big cat. And there's this little kitten, little white kitten. And it's like full on like feral to the stuff. Like, <laughs> and like scratching at it and like pissed, its ears are down and it's like going at it. And the serval just looks at it, takes its paw and puts it on the chest of the little white kitten. And the little white kitten's like, <laughs> It's just like calming down. It's amazing. You have to go watch it. Go to my personal Facebook thing and like look for that video. I'll try to remember to post it in the Rebel Goodness group too. But it's like to see the physiology of that kitten change. And I kind of joke like I wish this is how my husband responded to me when I got crazy bat batshit crazy like banshee screaming at him or something. Like if he just was like, it's all okay. You're safe. Like. It was amazing. And then it's funny because you can watch the kitten and the kitten's all calm. Then it's almost like you can see this thought enter its head like, wait, the fuck? what the fuck is that cat trying to do? Then it goes like, hey, and then the serval cat puts his hand on his chest again and the kitten goes like, oh, and wags its tail. I mean, it's so rad, y'all. So it's like the serval cat is helping the kitten get back into alignment, right? Calming the physiology. And so I really wanna bring it back to what I was talking about earlier today, right? When people lash out, they're coming from a place of fear, of pain, of suffering. When we lash out, we're coming from a place of fear, of pain, and of suffering. And it would be awesome if we could all see that, right? And hold space for that and have compassion for people like that. It's why I meditate, because when I meditate, I find I have more capacity for that, right? So of course I didn't do well when an airline agent tells me without logical reason, like something in the plane broke, like 
that I can't get on the plane. By the way, when I landed the next day, the vet's like, yeah, I asked around and I've never heard that. So I'm like, Alaska Airlines owes me some miles. But anyway, and not 4,000 miles. <laughs> and like I was being asked to process and make decisions and communicate out of alignment. And think about when you try to do that in relationships, asking people to process when you're out of alignment or when they're out of alignment. No bueno, right? It would have been awesome if I could have said, can you hold my space in line while I go meditate or do some breathing exercises, right? <laughs> so look, we're all human. We mess up. We learn from it. We try to do better next time. So we can have compassion for ourselves, right? Knowing we would have shown up differently if we were more aligned. It doesn't absolve us of responsibility. We can see our humanity of ourselves and others. And it hopefully inspires you to practice the self-care and prioritize the self-care so that you're in alignment more often. This, taking care of yourself, can you see now why taking care of yourself is so important and being able to show up for others in a heartfelt, whole way? It is in this way, right? It is in this way that we do that. So, Anyway, remembering that, right? Remembering that lashing out isn't right, but it's understandable in some of these contexts, right? So we are not perfect, no one is. And it would be awesome if, like I would love if whenever I lost my shit, the world gave me the benefit of the doubt, right? I would love it if when I was rude, or like I said, like upset at the gate agent that the world would say, oh, like I can see she's having a hard day. Like I remember, you may have remembered the podcast where I talked about losing my shit with a nurse. I thought my mom was gonna die, right? Like, like in, in dialysis, she, um, the nurse didn't run these labs because my mom was at risk for an infection. I was so pissed and then later I called her to apologize and the nurse said, it almost makes me cry. She was like, I am, I, I understand you just love your mother so much. And I just thought, oh my God, she got it. She understood, right? So like, what if we could do that for ourselves and for other people and say like, I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt and I'm gonna try to not process out of alignment. I am not gonna ask other people to process out of alignment. And if they are, I'm, I'm gonna try to give them some credit here for their humanity, right? Because wouldn't that be awesome? Isn't that what we would want to, right? And I just wanna encourage you to remember what Ram Dass said. Ram Dass said, we are all walking each other home. So let's be kind when we do that and do our best and be kind to ourselves when we fuck up, okay? Okay, my friends, I'm sending alignment your way. And hey, we still have a spot on the Adventure Mastermind in April. If you wanna deep dive into the soul work, do some amazing plant medicine, journey with us. It's optional, but it's offered. Um, come and apply or message me. We'll talk about it, adventuremastermind.com. And if for whatever reason you can't make the Adventure Mastermind right now, head over to joinfreedomschool.com because we are deep in this work every day. In fact, I have a call after this with Freedom School students, so I'd love to see you there, okay? Take care, my friends. Mwah. Aloha to you. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye. Bye, Melissa. Bye, Catherine. Bye, Angela. <laughs> Bye, everyone. You can catch the replay, all right? Ciao.